producers behind the scenes at Score North and 1500 ESPN have sports opinions. So they want you to hear them. It's the perfect digital sports soapbox to scratch that Minnesota sports itch. This is the Score North Taxi Squad. Two years, $90 million guaranteed. Is that just right for Kirk Cousins? Not enough, or should we pay him even more? We're going to discuss that and a whole lot more here on the Score North Taxi Squad today. Welcome in, everyone. My name is Jason Stormer. Joined along with the usual cabbies on duty, we got AJ Fredrickson and Artis Woods. If you want to check out this podcast, you can listen to it on scorenorth.com, the Score North mobile app, Apple, Spotify. If you want to see our lovely faces, though, you can check us out on the Score North YouTube channel. Gentlemen, how you doing? Uh, it got in the 50s. Here in the Twin Cities today, it is hot out there, and it's also hot with the NFL hot stove about where all these free agents are going. But how you feeling today? I broke out a T-shirt. I should have wore shorts today here. Man, it's nice out. Feeling pretty good, man. Uh, got an interesting Super Bowl coming up here, a Super Bowl that uh, I don't want to see, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> don't really want to see Kansas City back in the Super Bowl, uh, even though, you Could know, be Vikings Cowboys. fans. Yeah, that's true. That's sure. true. I will say that. You know, it could, could have been be the Dallas. Packers. It you could know? definitely mm-hmm. be worse. I know. You know, Vikings fans probably didn't want to see Detroit, um, but I didn't want to see San Fran either. Um, either way, you know, <laughs> it's it's a Super Bowl. I'm kind of ready to watch this football season out and start the next one. Uh, but other than that, man, I'm doing doing well. Normal day, just kind of chilling. Excited to get into today's show. Um, but we do have our special guest, um, Jason Kelsey. I mean, AJ Fredrickson. <laughs> <laughs> on today's episode. Inside jokes. Quick joke. Yeah, man. I, I ran across a picture of uh, young Jason Kelsey with the hair flowing and the beard going. And I sent it, like, screenshot it and sent it yeah. to the chat. I was like, dude, AJ looks like a young Jason Kelsey. I had to get that I mean, joke off. This is going to be like, very crude. I'm going to hold it up to the camera here. But, like, it's... Oh, the ring light's not very good. Okay, forget it. But Wait, like, they can still see it. Can they see it? You can still, you can still see right it. It's literally there. right. <laughs> it's uncanny, guys. Yes, Look at perfect. that now. Look yes. at that. <laughs> What year is that from? Do we even know? I have no idea. It was bro. back when the Pro Bowl jerseys were those terrible highlighter orange and green. Uh, yeah, yeah it must have been. I mean, he looks fairly younger, so I bet this was probably like I don't know, like sixteen, seventeen or so. Yeah. But yeah, it was a while ago. But I, I'm sorry, AJ. I had to question. No, that you're joke. good. I just, I just had to. I had to. You're good. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, yeah, it's nice. It's been warmer outside. Unfortunately, in my body, it's been colder. I'm battling a bit of a cold, so oh just. I, I want to get this out of the way because this is like I'm not self-conscious about a lot of stuff, but when I have a cold, I hate when people see me like mouth breathing. There's nothing. Mm. There's nothing going on in my <laughs> nostrils right now. I I would die if I had to try to breathe through my nose right now. So if you see me mouth breathing, that's why. Please don't call me a mouth breather. breather or do I really don't care. That's more engagement, more posts on the show. So f- feel free, call me a mouth breather. I don't care. But no. Uh, yeah, but, you just yeah. got about a hot, bunch of hot takes uh, built up right now, and yeah, you more, just want to release them and everything like that. A little that. more so than average hot air coming out of my mouth. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, no, hey, I'm, I'm excited. Um, <laughs> we'll get to it at some point, I'm sure, because we're going to maybe touch on the wild. But the way yes, their season's going, I've been able to indulge in my – in, in a passion of mine, which is uh, NHL prospect research. So, sure. uh, you know, we can get excited <laughs> about that. But, uh, but, yeah, otherwise, Super Bowl, two weeks away. Usher's got to be pissed that the Chiefs are there because nobody's going to be talking about him and only Taylor Swift. Um, But, you know, at the same time, suck it up. She's there. It doesn't take really any way away from the game. It's still going to happen. Chiefs are probably going to win, but we'll we'll get to that at some point. Let's talk a little bit. I I want to talk Wolves a little bit. I want to talk Wolves a little bit. You want to talk Wolves a little bit? What what exactly do you want to talk about the Wolves? Uh, What's going on? What's up in your craw? I want to talk about... Our savior, Anthony Edwards, eating a $40,000 fine, a $40,000 yes. fine, and criticizing, quote, these cheating ass refs, <laughs> end quote. And we can say that, I promise you. Yes, again. we can. Yes, we can. Yes. We're good. We're good. Yes. What, can what you a believe guy. that? What a uh, guy. No. Yeah. At a certain point, you got to hold your tongue. You got to hold your tongue. You got to hold your tongue. You gotta, at a certain point, you can't hold your tongue any longer. The Oklahoma City Thunder were straight up groping this man on his way to the basket. Just insane that we're not getting calls. Insane that the Wolves are not getting these calls. And granted, yes, they won the game. So did it really matter in the grand scheme of things? No. But you have to set a precedent here. You've seen, and I don't want to take a side, like a ricochet shot here at Artists Club, the LA Lakers, but the Lakers have gone to the line more times than any other team in the NBA by like, I want to say, 
it, like a, a dis it's a lot it's a i, I was a gonna lot. say 200 i don't think it's 200 but like a <laughs> distant amount they've yeah. driven the lane less than any other team how does that happen <laughs> Because of the LeBron names on that James. club, because of the market of the team, you have to set a precedent right now that the Minnesota Timberwolves are not going to roll over and just accept that they are a smaller market team that can get away with, you know, hey, we're going to take the lumps because, hey, we're the Timberwolves. No, you're not just the Timberwolves. You are the first place Western Conference Minnesota Timberwolves now, and you deserve respect. I'm not especially, especially respect from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Yeah. You are not taking that from them. The league needs to be put on notice, and it looks like they maybe finally did because I am seeing a February 23rd matchup with the Milwaukee Bucks being flexed to national television. Way to go, NBA. Let's Way go. to go, ESPN. I applaud Respect. you. Respect. But yes. now let's turn our attention to the officiating because Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, Mike Conley, these guys deserve to get these calls. If yeah. they are heading to the basket, guess what? They get grazed, send them to the line. This is a... I'm not going to say a big market team because it, we, we can't say that, but this is a up and coming one seed in the West. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a up and coming team that is number one seed in the West. They are a good basketball team. They're a team that's going to make a run in the playoffs and you have to go ahead and start giving them these calls. They cannot battle in the trenches every night, every once in a while, they have to get a call their way. Let's start doing it. Let's start making this the turning point and credit to Anthony Edwards for drawing a little more attention to this because when he goes up and finishes as hard as he did, and you can see a still frame photo that is ice cold evidence that there is a hand wrapped around his wrist. And then the NBA puts out a statement that it was mar not marginally impactful enough contact to warrant a foul. And then on top of that, you submit the fine for 40,000. That is the average median salary of a twin cities, public school teacher. Think about that. <laughs> Think about that. Literally. And I know the money I think we need to pay teachers more, I think, is what I think about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, but, conversation for another day. But yes, yes. Exactly. yes. Yeah, I don't know if this is the platform for that, but, hey, I I, I, I vouch that for sure. Um, <laughs> just insane. Start giving them the calls. End of rant. Yeah, I, I just – and I'll be the first to say, you know, um, I did come out last episode and say, you know, I don't like Anthony Edwards' attitude. He's been – He's been doing this, especially when he matches up against OKC. He he pointed out how many calls Shea uh, gets a game, and he's like, they're they hard to beat when Shea getting all these calls. But I'm not going to lie, man. Watching that game, he was like, all right, now, y'all got to call something. And it was weird because, you know, I think the numbers exactly were OKC shot 22 and, and the Wolves shot like 15 or somewhere around in that range. I got to double check. Mm -hmm. So the disparity wasn't crazy, but it was just like certain moments in the game where it's like, that's not – anything there were certain moments where i was like okay maybe even if you call that against the wolves that should be something whether it's a blocking mm -hmm. foul a charge um whatever that should be something and nothing was called it's really weird to watch because you pointed this out aj i mean the thunder aren't a major market team either you know they got a great young up-and-coming team just like the timberwolves yeah they've had more success than the wolves over the last what i don't know 12 years or so dating back to having you know kd and russ and all of, but those guys aren't there anymore they are again, and they didn't do anything with it and they did they, nothing they, with yeah, it yeah nope they went to the finals one year one lead that was yep. it you know and so and yes they blew a three one lead in the mm -hmm. western conference finals and so you know they're they're, they're an up and coming team just like the wolves so it's it was weird kind of watching them not get calls and i don't know what i expected from anthony edwards after the game but i do like him like he's real bro like he yep. keeps it Sometimes a little too real to me. I'm like, all right, bro, don't <laughs> say that, though. But I understood at the end of that game, like, man, look, man, them boys out there cheating. <laughs> like, like they not giving us nothing out here. And, you know, I, I did kind of agree throughout the game. It was moments where I was like, this is kind of egregious. But they got the win. Yep. That's a big win. Puts them back in first place. Yes, they lost against the Spurs. And I'm sure Jason is going to hit on that because we talked about, that, talked about that a bit off air. Yeah. But – um, they got the win over a team that you have to beat right now. Like this team is jostling for that for that first seed as well. Um, they still have. I mean, Shay, oh, that boy, Ugh, so that good. boy, nice bro. Like there, there's still really no answer for him mm -hmm. on the defensive side of the ball. It's like no matter who you match up against him, he's going for close to forty. He had thirty-seven, eight, and seven in this game. Um, luckily, Chet Holmgren didn't have a great game. I think he's no. a great young player too. But we shut um, him down. He, didn't, he got shut down in this mm -hmm. game, which is nice. Which is nice. Um, but they got the win, and I think that was the biggest thing. You know, a $40,000 fine, 
<laughs> I, I've said this before. I think I said it here, if I'm not mistaken, on this platform. Um, if not, I'll say it here. Um, I just don't understand how refs in not only this sport, I did say here, not only this sport, but in all sports, how they don't seem to get any type of like consequences for their bad officiating. But players who call them out on their bad officiating, they get teed up, they get kicked out, they get fined. It's like, yo, where is the like where is the fairness in all of this? You know what I mean? Like, sure. Yeah, a player, if he doesn't do what he's supposed to do, there are repercussions for it. If he, you know, cusses out an official and it's right, it could be could be 100% right, but no, that's a fine because you shouldn't have said that or you're getting teched up or you're getting kicked out. And, you know, that's the player's repercussion. But these referees can just go on from game to game and the league is going to back them up and say it, well, it was marginal contact. Marginal contact? Bro, <laughs> how is this marginal? On a dunk? How is this marginal? Just say he didn't see it. That's all you got. He yeah. didn't see it. He missed a call. That's a missed call. That's a quick yeah. way to just take responsibility instead of trying to back a ref that, you know, missed a call. But, yeah, you know. it was really confusing. I mean, the video evidence is absolutely clear that Shea grabbed him. So I don't really get the statement by the NBA. I don't know if they are just fe- feeling prideful or something like that. They don't want the refs to look bad. And I, I really don't know how this particular crew has graded throughout most of the season. I'm not sure if there's like a social media platform or something that grades NBA referees as a way that like major league umpires are in baseball are graded. I know there's a couple uh, Twitter uh, profiles that are dedicated to like keeping track of balls and strikes and how well umpires are making those calls. I'm not sure if there's something dedicated like that for basketball, but it has seemed like just across the league that the refereeing has been kind of a little one-sided in a lot of situations in the NBA. In this case, um, I really, at least, I, I mean, I hope that it's not just refs just completely just not doing their jobs and being incompetent. I, I hope this is a respect thing. I really do. I hope that this is just more of a symptom of just like maybe it's because the Timberwolves just haven't been there yet and these referees haven't seen this team in uh, crunch situations like this or being ha- or having this much success. I don't really know. I mean, I'm certainly still trying to get used to the Timberwolves being atop of the Western Conference like this. Maybe the referees are too. Granted, maybe it also has to do with Anthony Edwards' teammate, Carl Anthony Towns, who is notorious in the NBA as being one of the players that complains the most. And have we seen Ant kind of get more in the officials' faces or complain yes. about the referees this season? Yes. But yes. I think the difference in this case was is that the Timberwolves won this game. If Anthony Edwards had complained like this and they had lost, it would be a really, really bad look. But the fact that they won and they're still complaining, I think, adds just a different layer to this. And it doesn't really line up with the narrative. Oh, oh this team is immature. This team is complaining all the time. You know, uh, Anthony Edwards is turning into Carl Anthony Towns. No, that is not the situation here. So I- I'm hoping that that's the case because obviously you're concerned about the officiating moving forward if it's going to be that egregious. And yes, it's it's tough in the moment. Bang, bang, play, maybe, especially because that was just a phenomenal dunk by Anthony Edwards. It was probably his best yeah. of the season. Season. I mean, it was just absolutely phenomenal. It, like in the moment, I didn't see him get fouled or anything like that. I mean, normally players are smart and they just get out the way when uh, basketball players are cleared for takeoff to the rim like that. But SGA, it was a close game. I totally understand why he wanted to contest. But yeah, like you said, artists, they got the win and they got the win without Mike Conley again. He's dealing with a hamstring issue. This is now starting to really concern me, guys. It started kind of as an illness a few games ago, but now it's developed into a hamstring and we, we don't have a backup point guard, guys. I mean, we got Jordan McLaughlin, we got Shake Milton, but um, right now, even more so than ever, and we've already expressed our concern a lot here on this program for this. Whatever they got to do to enhance just the backup point guard role, it, it's got to happen, and it's got to happen sooner rather than later. I know the trade deadline, I believe, is on February 8th, so there's maybe not a ton of sense of urgency to do something right now, but if this hamstring issue is going to be a lingering problem for Mike Conley, and he's 36 years old, man, there's no guarantee that he's going to come back easy from this or even come back 100%. This is something that I think needs to be addressed sooner rather than later, and in and I think the Wolves also gained a lot of respect around the league for getting this win in Oklahoma City, too. I saw all the power rankings over the last week drop the Wolves from the top five, dropping them behind OKC, Denver, and L.A. And I was just like, come on, man. Look, I'm I was a little hesitant to really just like, all right, 
How is this team going to keep moving forward after the losses to the Hornets? And I even felt that way also after the loss of the Spurs, which, let's be honest, this win against the Oklahoma City Thunder is completely covering up that loss of the Spurs. That was just about as unacceptable as losing to the Hornets. I know they got Wemby. I know they got Pop. But if you consider the fact that Oklahoma City went to San Antonio just days before and beat them like 140 to 113, 14, or 15 or something like that, it's just really concerning to see your chief rival this season go and take care of the care take care of their business in a place where you you weren't able to but you did rectify that a ton by beating Oklahoma City on the road and uh, the schedule it doesn't get much easier guys you got the Mavericks tonight uh, that will be starting here pretty soon as we're recording to the as we're recording this however no Luca tonight for the Mavs no Kyrie for the uh, for the Mavs either they like announced a ton of players weren't going to play like 24 to 48 hours even before the first tip so that apparently this was a game that the Mavericks were totally willing to concede obviously they have to go play the game the Wolves have to go out there and actually still win but then they got the Magic I believe the Rockets and also I think the Bulls don't quote me on that for sure. I'm pretty sure it's the Bulls. If I'm wrong about that, sorry. But either way, uh, the schedule is not Bulls. light. It is the, it is the Bulls? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, these are all teams that are in playoff contention right now. So you've kind of moved past a little bit some of those softer teams, you know, like the Hornets, like the Spurs. And you're going to get into a little bit of a dogfight, even though I th- still think overall the Wolves have a fairly soft schedule that should hopefully benefit them as we make a run towards the playoffs. But yeah, this was an encouraging, encouraging win for sure. But still, a lot of warts, especially the turnovers, guys. I thought we had turnover issues with the Vikings this season, but these Timberwolves, and and again, I think that has My to do family. with yeah, and has to do with also just solidifying the point guard position and stuff like that. So um, it's encouraging um, that the Wolves got this win in Oklahoma City, but still, we gotta still keep things a little bit tempered, especially as these other teams in the West are really starting to hit their stride, like the Clippers, like the Nuggets, and I don't think Oklahoma City is going anywhere, even though they're a young team. And I think, you know, over this stretch, I think they should – let me get back to it. I was just there. Yeah, I think over this stretch they should go 4-0. Now, it's not going to be easy because the Magic are a young and unbecoming team in the Eastern Conference. They're playing really good ball. The Rockets surprise me, are surprising me this season. They're playing decent basketball. Both of those games are at home. You have the Mavericks without Luka, without Kyrie. That game is also at home. Um, but then you have that last game against the Bulls on the road. These should all be wins. They – I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's been as of late. But these games against these inferior teams, and at this point we can call these teams inferior because they are inferior to the Timberwolves at the moment. These got to be wins, fellas. I'm talking to the Wolves now. I don't know if you guys listen. Probably not. But if you do, these got to be wins, guys. (laughs) Like – you gotta have these games. Like these are not the games that you lose. Obviously, you don't want to lose any game, but it's you know it's the eighty-two game season. You're gonna lose some games. These games add up. So whatever you need to do to muscle up the the, the strength or muscle up the mental, whatever to get up for them. Because I know some of these games are hard to get up for. It's hard to get up for the Spurs. It just is. But at the same time, these are games that you have to have because at the end of the day, I mean. The Nuggets are a half game back. The Thunder are just a game back. The Clippers, who are playing great basketball right now, are, you know, two games back. You know, so the you could literally, over the next couple games, you could go from first to fourth in a second. Yeah, You, you lose a couple games. You sleep on a couple of these teams. You could drop. And the way they're playing, the way that this season has gone so far, it's inexcusable for them to finish anywhere near the fifth seed. Oh, it's, oh it, it's yeah, they have to get home court in the get, first round. That will be a failure be. in my eyes if you don't get it with where we are at in the standings at this point. We're more than halfway through. I know I, I don't care if it's the all-star break yet, and that's when people really truly say, all right, now when that's when the playoff push starts. No, it's already started for me, man. We, yeah. cannot, rel- we cannot relinquish home court in the first round. I won't have that any other way. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> literally, so, so I won't have that. Right? I won't even watch the playoffs if they don't. I'm, a, I'm abolishing basketball. If but literally, like, when you look at the standings, it's still possible, and I'm not asleep on the Kings. They're five games no. back, but the Kings can get hot, and, you know, this was a team that was playing well. Yes, they went home in the first round last year to the Warriors, but that's a team that can get hot, too, and like go on a bit of a run. So, you know, you, like, these games are important against these teams. Yeah. You should win all four. You, they should win. If they are the team that we think they are, they should win all four, and then they got a date with the Bucks. I believe that game is in Milwaukee, if I'm yep. not mistaken. And I think they play um, Milwaukee not too long after that, back at home too. Yep, they do. Yep, yep. They, they do. play with they, uh, they, they yeah they um only have three games in between both those Milwaukee games, yeah, so that'll that, be pretty quick. The, after that, they got the Clippers, they got the Blazers twice, you know. Mm-hmm. So and you got the Kings later on. Like the schedule kind of is getting a little thick. So yeah. let's. 
Let's go, y'all. Yep. Uh, Mike Conley, uh, Conley will play tonight against the Mavericks. Good. Um, okay, cool. Obviously been, like we said, sidelined by that hamstring soreness. I mean, honestly, if you are rest, if the Mavericks are resting all those guys, I mean. Might sit them out again. I, I, mean, I, I, was, I had that thought while you was talking. Like, if Mike Conley, I'm not rushing him back at all. Because you don't have a solid backup point guard. You don't mm-hmm. have the point guard position solidified. So, I would not rush yeah. him back. I mean, Listen, if he's healthy, time, I mean, I mean, these are athletes. I mean, if they feel healthy if and they're, they're healthy, good to go, yeah, go out there and everything like that. I'm just, I'm just being overly cautious right now. And, and, and frankly, it's not even because it's age. It's because he's literally our only good point guard on the roster. He's, yeah. he's the only guy that we can trust right now. And sure, Ant's gotten a little bit of run at the point this year. That's been okay, but the turnover rate's just gotten really high for him, and it's causing other no turnovers to, for the uh, other McLaughlin. team too. No shade, yes, no, no. Shade. No, and, and he's he's competent and he's getting minutes and everything like that. But if something were to happen to Mike Conley, I just don't have enough faith in Jordan McLaughlin to be able to take on that much responsibility. I, I, I just don't. So, yeah, uh, but I said February 8th. Yeah, the trade deadline date. So that's going to be happy. I mean, I mean, very, I mean, there could be a chance the next time we record this show that the Wolves have made a move and stuff like that. I, I would assume that they will. I don't think there's a chance that Tim Conley just holds serve and goes through the trade deadline and like, no, I'm not going to make a move. I, I would highly doubt that at this point. It might not be a move we necessarily expect. Maybe they get some wing depth or something, perhaps. But I just can't see any other avenue in which this team would prioritize adding to the team other than other than a point guard. They might make negotiating a little tough with teams because they know exactly what you want and you need. But you still, you just got to make them. Gotta it, it, it's got to happen. And it's got to happen sooner rather than later because we want these Wolves to continue their ascent in the NBA. And we want them to maintain this number one overall seed in the Western Conference. It's just absolutely wild that they're still at this point and still competing for the playoffs. And then some. Unfortunately, though, I don't know if we can say the same thing about the Minnesota Wild anymore after two devastating three to two losses at the hands of the Nashville Predators and the Anaheim Ducks. I was in a Attendance for that. My buddy Ben got me some tickets. It was Hockey Day, Minnesota. It was a lovely time. The atmosphere was wonderful, but then the puck dropped. And uh, yeah, the Wild uh, blew, um, blew that lead in the third period once again. AJ, look, I don't know. I don't know what's going through Bill Guerin's head right now. I don't know how he's feeling. I'm sure he's not too happy that the team is competing in this way and that we're at this point as we reach the All Star break. But at the same time, I also think he has a very clear picture about exactly what we should be doing with the rest of the season. Not that we should quote unquote tank or anything like that, but in terms of potentially moving on from some assets that could land us some prospects and get this farm system built up a little bit more as we're still going through these cap casualty hell with Breezy and Suter, it's pointing that direction, I would say, fairly more so than it ever has before this season. What do you think? Yeah, so right now it's uh, first off, they're on their break. Um, All star game coming up, I want to say in the third, and then they have like their mandatory NHL bye week coupled with that. So they're they have a 10 day stretch where they're off. Um, and this is going to be some people are not going to be thrilled about this statement, but it's a good thing that they lost both games to head into this like break because that lets Bill Guerin and the f- front office staff. Like that marinates. I was nervous that they would like maybe beat Nashville. It's a division opponent ahead of them. You gain two points, especially if you do it in regulation. Um, and then I figured like, okay, the ducks, you know, maybe somebody in, 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 in you know, in the offices is like, what if we just went out and we got a, a, a depth <laughs> defender? Cause we have the talent and all this stuff. No, this team does not. Uh, this <laughs> team is the furthest thing I think from a playoff team right now. Um, they, I know they've had injury struggles. Other teams have had that too. They've had such a bad start to the season. And now given where they're at 30, 33, I want to say games remain given their talent, their health, where they are, there's not enough games given all that. Plus the NHL's point structure, which I think they need to adopt with the PWHL is doing right now, where it's a, uh, three, two, one, zero three for a regulation win two for a oh, overtime or shootout that. one for an overtime loss or a shootout loss zero for a regulation loss given the two one zero aspect for the nhl there's just simply too many points being shared every single night and not enough of a reward for like winning in regulation for them to climb back and you might i know it's only a point a point matters quite a bit mm, so yeah 
Um, there's just not enough time, I think, for this club, even if they got on a hot streak. Like you can't, st- you'd have to be super lucky to have teams above you drop points consistently. And I just don't think there's enough time for them to do that. Um, so do I, do I say sell the house? No, you're not going to sell the house, but you might want to move on from like that couch that's been there for a while. If you get what I'm saying. Um, the problem yeah. with that though, is a lot of those couches and f- the other furniture have no move clauses that, uh, apparently we're handing out to every person and their mother because it is the most like, it is, it is so mainstream now. I just don't understand it. <laughs> I was, I was going to ask you about that. Like, how common is that in the NHL? Because I know in other sports, it's not that common yeah. for players to get no trade clauses at the rate that the Wild get trade clauses or no trade clauses. Yeah, it's it, to my to my disapproval. It's become a trend here. Way too is way too frequent. Um, and maybe it's a lobbying move now for a lot of agents where it's like, well, you know, if we're going to take this lower figure for your cap hit for your annual uh, annual average value why not uh why not throw this in as you know more incentive if we can buy a house here and not have to worry about selling it in a year and a half i want to have a little security we'll take a little bit of a discount but on the other side of things oh well you know if we if you don't want us to uh if you want to be able to move on from us at a certain point a year or two down the road pay us a little bit more and then blah 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 so um right now Matt Zuccarello has a modify that switches after this year because his new extension kicks in after the season. He can uh, submit a 10 team list of who he doesn't want to be traded to. Everybody else is fair game. Marcus Felino has a full new no move clause. Uh, Freddie Goudreau has a 15 team no trade list. Marcus Johansson, who no, I don't understand how this man got a no trade clause, a full no. one at that. He's making two million a year, so maybe that was the reason. But just insane that he got a no move or a no trade clause altogether. Ryan Hartman has a he had one that was, that is part of a extension. Excuse me, no, this one just kicked in recently. Either way, this is too much. This is yeah. too much to be giving to too many players that aren't that impactful on the roster. Oh, right, I mean, exactly. these should be given to superstars like the Kirill Kaprizovs, the Matt Boldies, those kind of guys. Not these guys. What's hilarious, what's hilarious your... is both of those guys that you just named don't have one. They don't? Wow. Boldy didn't no. get one in his last one? <laughs> no, but he granted, he's making seven mil, so it'd be really tough to make a move like that worth it or like okay. happen. So that's where that comes into play. But it's hilarious that those are the two guys you just picked out of a hat. Um, <laughs> and then on the other side of things, Jonas Brodin doesn't, uh, he has a no move clause. That makes sense i get that one alex kalagoski mm. for some reason he does that makes zero sense once again to me mm. um and then zach he's Bogosian, been in the press box a lot this year too i, know, I mean yeah. uh, just zach bagosian has uh, a 21 team no trade list and then mark andre flurry does as well <laughs> but the key- oh, wait, was, i'm sorry i'm sorry to interrupt <laughs> one 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 thing and i'll let you go aj yeah go ahead go ahead how does that so do they literally say, okay, I do not want to go to these 20, do not trade me to these 21 or these 15 teams? Or yeah, is that so, decided mm-hmm, by yeah. the organization? Like, how does that, that's the yeah, first so, time I've ever heard of any no trade clause like that. I thought it would just be with any team, but it's like, no, I, not yeah, these no, 15 teams. Choose. I can't go here. Yeah. So what they will, uh, what they will do <laughs> is it, 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 it kind of depends on the player because Usually there is a set date that they have to like submit a list by okay. somewhere earlier wow. in the season. So those guys will sit down and maybe it's like a, that team's just God awful. I don't want to go there. Right. Um, it's the coyotes. They play in a college town. They play in a barn that has 4,000 people. I mean, I don't want to go there or it's like, Hey, I grew up a Pittsburgh fan. I don't want to go play in Philadelphia. Cause that's like a bitter rival. And I just hold a grudge for whatever <laughs> weird reason. Um, wow. But depending on also the guy, Sometimes they will allow them if like it's a, you know, they, they've done a lot of good service. They've been with the team forever and they kind of want to be nice. Sometimes they'll say, Hey, you know, we are looking to move you. You can read the room. You know, the situation of our club. We're looking to maybe make some changes for the future. We want to give you a chance right now. Do you want to revise your list at all before we maybe start mm-hmm. talking to people? And then they'll work with the guys, but, but yeah, like Zach Bogosian, he can, he has, a, a he should have a list right now that's submitted to the team that has 21 teams on there that, doesn't that he just can't go to so that leaves them pretty limited on who they can make calls to um so yeah that's that's kind of how that goes which for the wow. player pretty pretty nice because frankly mm-hmm. what they could do is just pick a bunch of teams that they think are really good at the beginning of the year and then it's like well you know you're not going to trade me to a bottom barrel team for no reason 
at the end of the year. That's not going to benefit anybody. So then I'm then I essentially have a full move in a, in a no sense. So um, yeah, that's uh, super fun. That's the world of no move clauses, no trade clauses in the NHL. Welcome, welcome to my world. I mean, at least it's not as bad as like the NBA where players nowadays literally just pick a team that they want to be traded to and then hold yeah. their organization <laughs> yeah. hostage. Yeah. And like, no, like like James Harden going to the Clippers. He wouldn't accept a trade anywhere else. And eventually the Clip- like the Sixers had to figure out a deal to send him to L.A. and get something back in return. So it's not as bad as the NBA, but still, it, it's very finicky. But at this point, I mean, the Wild... I would assume, AJ, that they are going to sell a few pieces. I mean, they got some tie-ups, obviously, with some of these contracts, but that doesn't mean you can't move on from a guy like Pat Maroon, something like that. I know he's only costing you like $800,000, so it wouldn't save you a bunch of cap space. But if you want to maybe get some kind of prospect, he might be a guy out there. Obviously, Marc-Andre Fleury, um, I don't know if his numbers might scare some teams away, but I still figure a Hall of Fame presence in a locker room would still be fairly attractive to some some teams. I don't know if you can get the second-round pick uh, that you got originally from the Blackhawks for him. Um, but that could potentially be something that the wild need to look at, even though I would be, I would be bummed to see flurry go because I definitely wanted him or still want him to end his career with the Minnesota wild if possible. But if Bill Guerin, you know, if he gets a call on him and he can't say no, then he, he's going to have to take that deal. Um, well, I'll yes. stop you there really quick. They, mm-hmm. he has a no move clause, a full no move. So he, would yes, have to yeah, actually- I know. Yeah. Like wave it, and frankly, right. Bill Guerin, them being friends, if he goes to his office and says, "Hey, you know, I look, I want to try to compete. This might be my last year." And the thing about him is now you don't know with his concussion injuries. But that being said, his mm-hmm. partner Philip Gustafson has, uh, after this season, two years left of control by a team making three point seven five million dollars. That is a contract and a player, given how he's played despite the losses the past week and a half or so. He looks good. He's 25. Mm -hmm. Um, His play has definitely been coming around. He's been a notorious slow starter in the crease. You saw this last year. And now he seems to be back in like his normal form. Um, There are teams out there that are going to need goaltending. And I think they're going to pay a relative premium. And I say relative because they're not going to give you a, a King's ransom here. But if you get a conditional second that could become a first, I think you probably take it. But I think you could probably start the asking price at a first in a team that's desperate enough would probably give that to you. Yeah. And if you're confident about Jesper Wallstead coming back to the NHL and playing competently, I mean, yeah, that's obviously a move that they can make. Obviously he had a bad debut, but I don't think that's indicative of the career that he's going to have. And eventually he's going to need to come up to the NHL and uh, get some starts under his belt. And, Frankly, I can't think of a better situation than a team that's not competing for a playoff spot to get those reps in. And so that might work out perfectly for uh, Jesper if the Wild decide to go in that direction. But yeah, God forbid, if they do try to make something out of the season, I mean, AJ, artist, it's going to take like Devin Dubnik, the savior Jesus coming pretty much here like he did in 2015 for the Wild to really pull this one out. I mean, they were very similar situations at that time in the standings. Uh, They were definitely below 500 or... I guess the below 500 isn't exactly a term in hockey, but the wild were reeling at that point, but they still had Parisian suitor and they still had a lot of big time players. They had to keep competing. So that's why they made the move for Devin Dubnik and he saved the season for them. I just don't think there's a trade like that out there for the wild in this case to save this season. The draft's pretty deep with the Celebrini kid. Even if he's not a generational super, super talent like McDavid or Bernardar, he's like on that next bottom tier right below that. And so, yeah, Get some ping pong ball luck at this point, Minnesota Wild. Um, it's unfortunate. We're not used to this position as Wild fans. Normally, we're on the other side of this conversation. Even when the Wild are kind of teetering on the playoff brings, we kind of always just know this team to kind of go you know, in on their seasons and continue to invest in them and compete for playoff spots. But just more so than ever, especially under Bill Guerin's, um uh, during his tenure, we're finding the Wild in a position where it actually probably would benefit them to, you know, not necessarily compete at the highest level, I guess I should say, even though that's a terrible thing to say. And that's obviously not where you're encouraging the locker room. And I'm pretty sure if I said that to Bill Guerin's face, he'd punch me or something like that. (laughs) Uh, But it's just, it's, it's, it's obvious. And I know we just aren't, this is a team that is as proudful on making the playoffs every single year. We had that long streak when Parisi and Suter were here and that's awesome, but it's just, you can't maintain that forever. It's kind of like the Vikings. You're hovering at this, you know, 10 and 7, 9 and 8, 8, 9, 7 and 10 records seem like every single year. And eventually, you know, kind of what maybe the Vikings should do maybe in this offseason and whether or not they're going to keep Kirk Cousins or not. Sometimes 
The best thing you can do is just start over. And it's looking like the Wild might need to do that. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe they got to run like they had in them like in 2015. You never really know. I'm doubting it, though. I I, I would be – I don't think he would. I think Bill Guerin is smart enough to like – he's not going to publicly wave the white flag, but I think he might do it behind the scenes. Um, if he did make a big trade, I think that raises – every single like red flag caution tape, whatever to start very much questioning mm-hmm. the front office, him included mm-hmm. about just like what the direction of the team is, because this is not a team that you should be trying to buy for. Um, case hey, in point, was- just look at, sorry, case in point, just look at what the Calgary flames are doing and all the speculation around the Calgary flames. I mean, they're setting up for a fire sale and they're ahead of us in the standings in the Western conference. If they're doing that, why aren't we? Some great, great, pun. great, great pun with the fire sale for the flames. Um, mm-hmm. quick shameless plug for wild fans that maybe are looking for draft news. You don't know who the prospects are, blah, blah, blah. Um, we did a Judd's hockey show that I'm pretty proud of because I did a lot of the research on. I love looking at NHL prospects and whatnot. Um, I unveiled my top 10, uh, draft prospects as of this past Monday did it with Judd. It's over on the, it's well, you're on the score North YouTube page right now. If you're watching, if you're listening, go on there or just check the uh, Judd's hockey feed, uh, Judd's hockey show podcast feed from this past Monday. Obviously Macklin Celebrini is the number one prospect, but there are some juicy others. I think through at least pick six, I could be excited about seven or eight too, if they end up being in that realm. Um, and it's a very deep defenseman de- uh, draft. So this is going to be one where the wild really, they should be able to get a decent pick, uh, a decent prospect, as long as they're in that like top six, which right now they're projecting like they probably could. Yeah. But you never know with the draft lottery. They might get screwed. It's Minnesota. Don't hold your breath. If the Blackhawks win <laughs> no, the lottery breath. again, or like an original six team wins it, or an East Coast team wins it, I'm, I'm just going to lose it. I, I can't handle this. I know they've snuck in like the New Jerseys and the Buffaloes of the world for, their, for, for the number one overall picks, but I'm just... I'm getting tired of this. There, there is no NHL. There is no lottery system that I think is more rigged than the NHLs. I don't understand why any of these rigged, but it just it it smells funky most of the time. Well, I don't understand why any of these, even for the NBA as well, do it live. Why are we not doing these live? There is so much like literal money on the line for the future of franchises. The weight that these little ping pong balls hold to just. I'm just going to take your word for it. Absolutely not. Unless well, the like draft lottery for the NBA is live. If I'm not mistaken, they do. I, the act- they do I, you know what? Yeah, they do have, they, they the do do the ping pong the NBA balls in front of, yeah, in oh, front of they? people now, yeah, they but do. the NHL they should do. too. I don't know what they're I, waiting that, for. That's weird. Okay. I miss, I, I could have sworn <laughs> the last, um, last year for the, um, Wimbin Yana pick. I remember like I was working, I was sitting where Jason was and I was watching it on TV and I almost am positive that they didn't show the actual ping pong balls. They just like did the cards and it was a whole thing. So maybe unless they like oh, released mm. it afterwards, but even okay. then that's to me, that's dodgy because you know, you never know. Do, yeah. do it live, put a giant flashing red thing in the corner that says live footage. I want real time reactions for these ping pong balls. That's all I want because then I yeah. can tell you like, Hey, okay, then it's actually fair, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, do it live. Maybe Bill O'Reilly could host it. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm looking at the video right now. Just something on YouTube. The NBA draft lottery does do. They do do the ping pong balls in front of people. They're like okay, in some kind Gary of ho- they're like in some kind of hotel conference room or something, and they got all the executives there. It's very intriguing television. So very I mean, but it, it's television. transparent. It's transparent. That's what hey, we that's care about. I, that's all I want. Gary Bettman, take notes. Adam take Silver kind of knows what he's doing. Believe it or not. Amen to that. <laughs> especially when it comes to giving Anthony Edwards fines. Anyway, all right. Uh, last thing I want to cover here on Taxi Squad. I know I mentioned it at the top of the show, but we just dove right into the Timberwolf stuff. The speculation, finally, guys, we've got at least a number that we can you know, chew our teeth uh, or uh, bite down onto a little bit in terms of what the money is looking like for Kirk Cousins and the contract that he's looking for in free agency. A two-year, $90 million guarantee is what some are saying. Uh, this is from Charlie Walters from the Pioneer Press, that the buzz now is that it will take that $90 million guaranteed for those two years, despite that he's still not fully recovered from that Achilles surgery back in November. Uh, if that's the case, Charlie also adds a little editorial here. He certainly won't get that 
from the Minnesota Vikings. So, guys, this is the first number that we've seen really attached to Kirk Cousins about what potentially that contract could be. Do you think this is appropriate? Do you think it's not enough? Or do you think it's too much? Let's uh, do uh, Goldilocks here with the porridge. Uh, warm, cold, or just right? How are we feeling about this initial number that's thrown out for Kirk Cousins' deal, potentially? Cold as uh, not Wisconsin Minnes- or Minnesota. Not right now. It's 50 today, in, man. Are you kidding? In <laughs> early January, late December, cold is cold like ice glaciers. Ice. Uh, cold is negative 30 wind chill with negative five. Like cold like the Eagles at the end of the season. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. No, I'm but sorry. Yes, I'm that's sorry. cold. Yes, because that was so cold. <laughs> That, that, that was cold, man. That, <laughs> that, 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 that one hurt, hurt a little bit. All I'm right, sorry. Right. I owe you one. It, it's all good. It's okay. almost as cold as uh, the Vikings' chances of getting Look to the Look at Super AJ. Bowl. He disappeared. Um, AJ do not want no crossfire. <laughs> he um, See you next week, AJ. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes. He's, at, he's asking for $90 million over two years. $90 million guaranteed. That's $45 million over two years. Patrick Mahomes. In the Super Bowl, my in my estimation, will win the Super Bowl. That's how much money Patrick Mahomes is making. Uh, the next person, Josh Allen, was just in the playoffs this year, lost in the second round, divisional round to Patrick Mahomes. He's making forty three million dollars a year. Um, you got uh, Matt Stafford won the Super Bowl within the last five years. He's making forty million dollars. Then you got Dak Prescott, all pro this year, forty million dollars. Um, AJ's still going. I know he's still gone. I'm sorry. I'm laughing um, this whole time because AJ just won't come back. I, I I I just at this point now I remember when we talked about the draft and I was like maybe you bring them back and if you bring them back do you draft? Them? I am a hundred percent with everybody in the comment section. A hundred percent with AJ, who I remember was adamantly like get a quarterback. You have to, <laughs> to draft a quarterback this year. And and and. I remember telling Grant when he was here, shout out to Grant again. I remember telling him because he's like, you know, I don't think Kirk is going to be too expensive. You know, maybe he settles for less. <laughs> da, da, da. And I remember saying like, but Kirk has never really done that. Exactly. Kirk has yeah. been like this guy his whole career. And now we expect him to be this guy coming off of a Achilles tear, knowing he's probably only got maybe two, three great years left in the league. If that, who knows how he'll come back after this injury. No, he's not a mobile guy. So, you don't think it'll it will affect him too much, but at the same time, like you know, I, we we should not expect him to take any type of pay cut from the Vikings. But at the same time, it's like, yo, Kirk, really? You're gonna at this point let Atlanta reach, let whoever wants a quarterback, a vet quarterback like Kirk Cousins, let them reach and pay him that amount of money and go draft you a, a young rookie quarterback on a rookie scale contract. The only trepidation I have about this is. Justin Jefferson, you still have to re-sign J.J. Who knows how J.J. feels about this? We know that's his guy. But, you know, if I am, you know, crazy, if I'm KOC, I'm like, look, bro, we 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 can't do it. <laughs> like, we have to move in another direction at this point. We have to get you a young quarterback. I'm sorry. Hopefully you stay. We'll throw everything we get. All the money we won't throw at Kirk, we'll throw it at you. All right? We'll throw you everything we got. But, bro, we got to move on from this because the way to success is not giving this man $90 million over two years. I'm just not confident, Kirk. You know what? I, you guys can go. <laughs> I was going to say something I shouldn't. You guys can go. $90 million is insane. That's insane. <laughs> bro, for, like what? For for a guy that is his age coming off a, a, a an Achilles tear and then also, like, his purpose is essentially going to be, like, a high end, like top ten QB, bridge quarterback probably. Like if you, I'm still. I'm, and this is this is where some people might disagree. I'm dead set on the fact that if you don't choose a quarterback here, one, I think that limits the time for Quasi and KOC, because mm-hmm. at this point you have really not re shaped the identity of the Minnesota Vikings by not having your own quarterback to at least take a shot at. Mm-hmm. If you are both either of them, you have to like extend yourself a little bit, like extend the hook so that you can have maybe another season by drafting a younger guy, just so we can like see how it plays out. See if you made the right pick. If you really want to put your chips all in on Kirk cousins, 
by all means. But I think that just ruins uh, that just ruins everything. It just ruins everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> like sure, you could probably get a wrong. you could you could get a pretty good guy where you are at eleven. But given their history, what what leads me to give them the faith that they're gonna nail that eleventh overall pick, right? Given their history, sure. Jordan Addison last year, I'll give it to him. Some of these other picks, though. Lewis Seen? Are you kidding yep. me? Kyle Agreed. Hamilton was there for yep. the kids. And Jason that Williams is, looked pretty good in the, in the playoffs, too. Just saying. That Alabama speed, baby. And you let um, Detroit have them. Just saying. It's, uh, yeah. I nine, 90 million is crazy. If a team wants to give them that, by all means, but it should not be a team that's purple. You know? <laughs> Amen. The money yeah. that because you, to make it work, if you really wanted to, you're gonna have to like push some stuff back. But then, so this year maybe it's fine. Whatever the cap at next year is gonna be insane, and then you're probably gonna have deferred money, dead cap, the year following in 2026, when more than likely he will not be on your team. Mm-hmm. Right. Think about that. Mm-hmm. So get get yourself a young guy in this draft who there, there's a there's a good handful, and yes. I want to give I want to give Jason credit because I thought it was a total fabrication, just a made up fairy tale. I'm seeing Bo Nix projected in the top 15. <laughs> what the hell is happening? What are we doing? You might lose that money, bro. <laughs> you I, might lose that money. Validation. You guys also told me, insulted me when I said Amon Ross St. Brown was a top five wide receiver this year. Oh, he finished first team all pro. Just saying. I mean, just I, saying. Hey, 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 listen. At the, at the time, wrong at the time, the time I still that don't know wasn't if he's crazy. top five. That's just me. I still don't know if he's top five. Just, just, That's fair. That's fair. But I, I give you credit. He had, he had a great year this year. I feel validated. Thank you very much for that, AJ. You're welcome. That being said, his pro, uh, his pro day or whatever it was today, apparently I heard stock went down and it was mm. not, it was not great. So maybe he yeah. just did me a favor, but there are guys, there are guys in the draft. What is stopping you from taking one of them? If Kirk wants to walk by all means, let him for 90 million to another team. You can, you can get a decent bridge guy. The, the, yes. You can get a decent bridge guy. Cause frankly, yeah. This is the same thing I'm thinking about with the wild in terms of I know the Wilfs are not going to be a, a, a fan of this, but by losing Kirk, in a sense, you're winning by losing. Mm-hmm. Get what I'm saying? Yep. Um, imagine having back to back years where you add a top, t- let's say a top 10 talent mm-hmm. because maybe guys fall at it's very possible to 11. You get a guy that probably shouldn't or even. Let, wow. Let me let me jump into the water here. Maybe they move up. Maybe they trade Why? Up. Why? What? Not crazy possible. to think Impossible. about. Um, Can't even yeah. fathom that. But yeah, that it, that's that's where this kind of comes into play. And, you know, mm-hmm. maybe if you trade up, your pick next year is non-existent and it's to another team, so it doesn't matter as much. But I ninety million is just crazy. Kirk is a fantastic quarterback. Is he going to come? Like he's a pocket presence guy, so maybe the injury and recovery aren't going to like affect his game too much. I it, there's just too much yep. kind of left hanging out there for me to just believe in him, especially if he if he was younger. Sure, maybe, but just like he's not going to be your quarterback for more than I think two years more max, and the role that he would I think come back to is not that one that is going to be built for like a future push. Do you really think mm-hmm. this team is like one or two guys away from being a Super Bowl contender? No, I, no, unless it's a cornerback and an edge rusher, and they got to be elite. Yep, and then everybody's ha- has to stay a hundred percent healthy. Exactly, yeah. teams yep. teams get hurt every year, and I understand. They like when they were healthy, are they a much better team than they were at the end of the season? Absolutely. I would much rather have Kirk than Josh Dobbs or Jaron Hall um, or Sean, not, not Sean Mannion. Uh, well, Nick also Moe, Sean Mannion, Mannion though. Or Sean, are you? Him. <laughs> for, no offense, Sean. That point too. I, yeah. but I teams get hurt. You, you have to expect there's injuries, maybe not as gruesome as what was, you know, conspiring this year, but I just, the 90 million is insane. No, that was just such I mean, a long rant for me to come back around to the same point. Jason, go ahead. W- wasn't his original contract with the Vikings three years, like 89 million, which is just crazy to think that he is probably no matter what going to make more money off of this contract five or six years later than he did when he hit first hit free agency after Washington. It's absolutely mind blowing 
ra- just raking in that cash. Good for the Cousins family. And again, this comes back to the whole debate that we've had here ever since really that Netflix show came out. Just how committed is Kirk Cousins to like staying in Minnesota? Does he want to take his family somewhere else? Does he want to stay where he is? He's been on record saying that he obviously wants to stay here and everything like that. But again, he's never taken a discount. The Vikings can't pay him that money. I just don't even know if the cap would work out for that situation. I don't know who we'd potentially have to cut or for sure say goodbye to like the Daniel Hunters of the world. But that would all but guarantee that like, honestly, at this point, if you bring him back for that money, guys, there's no way. I don't think the Vikings are a better team next year. Even if Kirk is able to stay healthy the entire team, I don't think they're going to be able to build around him in that contract if they do this. Um, I am always, and and look, I don't think it's, and I think everybody wants to see this at some point. We truly can't judge KOC and Kwesi officially until they do get a chance at the quarterback that they actually pick, not one that they inherited. And I think now, maybe, maybe more so than ever, that direction is pointing in that particular way for the Vikings to go. Um, there's, I mean, the whole speculation with Atlanta is that Kirk's family, he's got family down in Atlanta, his wife's got family down there. I don't know if they're still the leader in the uh, for odds right now. I think Vegas might still be at a, like a plus 400 or something like that. And I don't know after this news if the odds have changed anymore. Um now, is there now, uh, guys? Of course, this this is no guarantee. Maybe Kirk will actually come down from this from this initial report. There's still plenty of time for these deals to ne- be negotiated. But I think we're all in agreement here that it, it cannot be this number. There, there is just no way that the Vikings are going to be able to improve as a football team if we have to pay Kirk even more than what we are paying him now. And you know what? Maybe if he didn't get hurt. Maybe if he actually were able to play the entire season and was able to keep up the stats and get the Vikings in the playoffs and heaven forbid win a playoff game, maybe just maybe we can talk about this conversation, but we can't. And the scary thing about it, too, I mean, I just I just don't know who all is going to be willing to throw this money out there. I don't know if the Vikings are. I don't think they will. But I mean, somebody was willing to pay Daniel Jones forty million dollars a year. <laughs> It'll be somebody. You like, know what I mean? <laughs> somebody will jump out there and pay him. They that they will. Money. They they will. It just the Vikings can't do that. No, they won't. They can't. And it's looking like now that the market is really going to just just take over here with what ends up happening with Kirk Cousins. And if that's the case, you know. Talk to Ryan Tannehill. Maybe talk to a Gardner Minshew. Heck, I would even be open to Baker Mayfield coming to the Minnesota Vikings for mm. a bridge year. But I don't think he's going. I think he's going to stick around in Tampa. I don't I think, think so they're going to let him go. Uh, maybe even guys like, I don't know, I think Jacoby Brissett got some action this season. Jameis Winston. Maybe everybody get those crab legs no. out. Uh, You're no, 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 no. If, no, wow. I, if you want a quarterback to throw 30 touchdowns and 30 interceptions, <laughs> Jameis is your man. It would be fun. It would be electric. The post game quotes would be so much fun covering Jameis, especially yeah. if, if, especially if like two years ago we would have kept Jim Harbaugh. Imagine having like Jim Harbaugh and Jameis Winston in the same quarterback room and everything like that. That would have just been absolutely no, no magnificent shots. television. I know it, it would I know. be musty TV. Though, it would have been musty oh, TV. Yes, absolutely. But anyway, uh, yeah, we're all in agreement. If it's two years, forty-five million guaranteed, and guarantee is the big part of that there. And I'm assuming, talk about the Minnesota Wild, there might be some no trade clause involved with that kind of stuff as well. Not exactly what kind of guarantees Kirk or assurances Kirk is looking for there, but it's just it's it's not going to work. Especially your draft in borderline top ten deep quarterback class. Let's go get that guy, that quarterback of the future. Let's get our bridge quarterback. I mean, Gardner Minshew, I think, didn't he just get named to the Pro Bowl, too? That would be a fantastic, that would be probably my top choice as a bridge quarterback, Gardner Minshew. And it's not just because he has fantastic hair. I just think he was able to take a really bad situation that the Colts were in with Anthony Richardson getting knocked out for the season and was able to elevate that team. Gardner Minshew has done some very, very underrated things so far in his career, even if the stats don't line up. But I just think he's competent enough and he's borderline at that like 31, 32 best quarterbacks in the league. And maybe even more so if he was named a Pro Bowl, the Pro Bowler. The season i know the pro bowl is not the same uh, what are they doing for the pro bowl it's this weekend did they do it is it like flag football now i know they don't do the traditional game anymore which mm. is fine because that was getting 
horribly, horribly unwatchable. I mean, if you think like the NBA All-Star Game and the NHL All-Star Games are hard to watch, the NFL one was just absolutely brutal. I feel like it all went downhill after Sean Taylor delivered that massive hit on that Buffalo Bills punter back in like 2006 or 2007. You guys remember yeah, that? Definitely. That was fantastic. And the punter got up immediately, got in Sean's face and like, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm a punter. I'm a football player. We're good. Let's go. Uh, the Pro Bowl's gone. I remember like as a kid, like, oh, I was so excited to watch the Pro Bowl because it used to be like the last football game of the year too. It always used to be after the Super Bowl. I always loved it and stuff like that. But now nah, it's just it's it's unwatchable. I don't even know what's going on anymore. I just don't care. All star games now are just terrible. I hate yeah. them so much. Except baseball. That, baseball yeah, still say, doing you know, okay. Baseball is yeah. the only one that salvages that because they actually like try. They and have they, you to. Know, they have no pitch, pitchers go out. Yeah, pitchers <laughs> go out there and it's like. You, you got an inning to try to throw your best stuff against some of the best yeah. hitters in the league. So why not? But yeah, hockey is like it, they, they tried changing the format. It's not two teams. Yeah. It's four teams now. And they play like three on three. And the guys kind of care because there's money involved, but maybe not. Yeah. No offense to the NBA, but it's a clown show. It's just it's, how many three pointers and 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 dunks it's that we can do for the first like three quarters. And like maybe we'll try for the final like 10 minutes. And then <laughs> right. the NFL. Yeah. I mean, it, it used to be like the, the biggest clip was somebody getting a penalty for like a false start in the Pro Bowl, and the ref made a funny like n- like line about it ahead of time. But now yeah. they just they just play dodgeball, and it's like jump off this trampoline and try to look cool in slow motion, and we'll give you a rating out of ten. It's like the dunk contest, but it's not cool. Mm. Um, yeah, baseball has, is saving. Um, yeah. Really quick, well, uh, somewhat off topic, but kind of back to what we were talking about. There is a as we were talking a potential trade going down in the NHL between the Canucks and the Flames that involves potentially somebody who has uh, Vancouver on their no trade list. So right now the Canucks and Flames are trying to make a move that sends Elias Lindholm to Vancouver. Andre Kuzmenko is part of the deal, but he has Calgary on his no trade list. So, <laughs> so, so basically Vancouver is like at his door. Please, please just say yes. Like, <laughs> please go to literally Alberta. they're just like basically begging him. Like, so here's why this would be good for you to go from a con- like a cup contender, one of the best teams in the league. Yeah. To a team Vancouver's that's selling. Good. Here's why it's good for you. And then. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's so crazy. Yeah, that sounds yeah go terrible. to Vancouver. They've been bad for years, and they're finally good. And that fan base has no. been waiting for a long time to actually celebrate something. Well, think he'd be going from Vancouver to Calgary. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Exactly. I'm oh okay. Yeah. I got it flipped around. Okay, so yeah, you're, you know, you got to leave a good team for for a bad team. And like and it. I hear British Columbia is just nicer than Alberta. That that's just what I hear. I've never <laughs> been. Never been. I want to go to Banff National Park someday, though. Someday, eventually. Okay, guys, another lively show here in the Score North Taxi Squad. More Viking stuff that we got into, obviously, with these numbers that are thrown out there by Charlie Walters of Pioneer Press about Kirk Cousins. Again, we're all in agreement. You can't pay the man that kind of money. Absolutely not, but we'll see what happens. Not sure if a deal is imminent or anything like that. I think still a long way to go before we actually hear about Kirk Cousins signing any pen to paper. Timberwolves, keep on rolling. Keep on winning. Let's not have any more Hornets and Spurs issues come up, please. Let's some of those turnovers. Let's get a backup point guard if you don't mind. And uh, Billy Garen, Minnesota Wild, just be open to taking the phone calls at this point. Let's just take those phone calls. Let's have some conversations. Let's see what maybe some teams are offering. It's okay. I know it's a position we don't want to be in, but I think that's just how things have got to go with the Wild, at least here in the 2024 season. Guys, any final thoughts before we wrap things up for the week? Yeah, man. Uh, kind of on topic, but off topic, but not really on topic. D'Lo what? might end up getting traded again, guys. Oh, D'Lo boy. might be up out of there. And it's weird. The weird mm. thing about it is mm. he might get traded for DeJounte Murray, which is what oh. we talked about before. Throwback to the early days of Taxi Squad when we had the Wolves no, uh, podcast. No, so, no. yeah, he might don't get traded want for DeJounte him on the Murray Lakers. No, no, no. We don't want that. No. You Russell, want that. I don't want that. As of late, since he's been in a trade <laughs> conversation, he's averaging like 28 points a game. He's playing lights oh. out. But, like, in the wow, month of shocking. December, he was averaging like six points a game. I mean, he was like... Funny cold, when the reports like start almost, coming out, and uh, funny he starts playing well again. Literally, funny. literally, like, like, but like funny. in December, he was, he was, he needs he was, a fire under his ass to do anything. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, swear, it's, he it's, just does. It's weird. Like I said, dude, it's in annoying. December, in Let's December, go. when I say he was bad, like he was, 
like bad. <laughs> Couldn't get a shot to fall. Literally was like as cold as probably Ice like the, the Twins' bands. chances of getting to a World Series. Anytime. Oh, so, yes. He came back from the Eagles' <laughs> comments. <laughs> Touchdown, artist. That's what I like to see. That's my man. That's pew, right there. Pew, pew, pew. The Twins ain't going to the World Series, though. They ain't no expectations of that. You guys actually had Super Bowl expectations. We don't. We cut our payroll. We don't have a TV deal. Joke's on you. Anyway, what? I almost couldn't get that joke off. You kept interrupting me mid-joke. I'm like, damn it, Jason. Let me get the joke off. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's it, though. I'm done. Okay. AJ, I've got nothing, comments. too. Let's wrap her up. <laughs> oh, I was just going to comment. Uh, the, the Jorge Polanco move with the Twins. Um... If there's any, like, inklings out there in the organization that this was for salary purposes that we traded him, the man only made $10 million. Like, come on. Now, granted, you got two relievers uh, that are, now one of them's got some elbow issues, I hear, and you got a top 100 prospect, so you got a decent haul for Jorge Polanco, but I'm just getting so annoyed. The Twins, at the at their highest peak in several years, have put themselves in this position now with their TV deal and just like the inability or just the unwillingness of the poll ads to really, you know, do anything other than make a profit for their team. It's just so frustrating that we're in this position again where it's just like, all right, we got to say goodbye to players or we have to move on from players because apparently $10 million is too much for a guy to be making on a major league roster. It's just, ah, uh, you're right, artists. The Twins probably aren't going to be winning the World <laughs> Series this year, but they're lucky that they're in such a crappy division that they might still win the win it anyway, just based off the roster that they're going to put on. I mean, sure, maybe some more trades will happen. They unclog the infield a little bit by moving on from Polanco, but it just, they've killed so much momentum that they've had from last season, and it just is so disconcerting. Yes, Joe Mauer's in the Hall of Fame. We're happy about all that, but you know, once the uh, pitchers and catchers report spring training starts going down and they start playing baseball games, I think um, you know, maybe some Twins fans are going to be a little disappointed that this team didn't add more to the momentum that they created back in 2023. Anyway, uh, that's the end of my rant for the Twins anyway. Uh, we got to wrap up Taxi Squad. I was totally confused about what we do next. We got to wrap up the show. It's over. Uh, this is the Taxi Squad. I am Jason Stormer. That's Artist Woods and AJ Fredrickson. If you want to listen to us, you can check us out on scorenorth.com, Score North mobile app, Apple and Spotify as well. If you want to see our lovely faces, though, the Score North YouTube channel is where you can go for that. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we uh, you have a wonderful week, and we'll catch you back next time for another lively conversation of Minnesota sports here on the Score North Taxi Squad. Take care. Bye-bye.